viewers and welcome to V Concept College English. My name is Ernest. Today I want to start a new series on lessons and structure. And this series is entitled 200 Commonly Misused Expressions in Everyday English. 200 Commonly Misused Expressions in Everyday English. Therefore, in this series, we shall look at the reasons for misused expressions in English and offer tips for avoiding these mistakes in your speech and writings. Can they follow up with all the videos that we shall be uploading in this series to catch a glimpse of the full gist? Have a happy view. Welcome to the 12th episode of our 21 in 1 video series entitled 200 Commonly Misused Expressions in Everyday English. In today's episode, we shall be considering word sets 101 to 110 and the expressions that we shall be considering in this episode shall include branch at your house, I ask after you, look after her, check on you, check up on you, a lot of damages, pay for damages, I like it anyways, frank and sincere, that is to be frank and sincere, and then finally we shall be considering the way and manner, like the way and manner you did this or that. So right away we shall take on the first expression, which is branch at your house. Our first word set in this episode is I will branch at your house on my way home with the word branch or the line in the expression to indicate a logical error as the error type to which the expression can be classified. Now, what's the standard usage of this expression? Instead of saying I will branch at your house on my way home, you could say, I will call at your house on my way home. Or, you say, I will stop by your house on my way home. I will call at your house on my way home. Or, I will stop by your house on my way home. Now, for the first one, we have branch. That is as underlined in the non-standard expression. This word branch cannot be used instead of call at. We may only use the word branch to refer to a tree. In other words, in the context of a tree or in the context of a business that is expanding from one place to another. So instead of saying, I will branch at your house on my way home, you would say, I will call at your house on my way home. Or you say, I will stop by your house on my way home. So this is how we can discuss this expression in everyday English. With that, we move forward to our next set of words, which includes, I ask after you. On that word set 102, we have two expressions to consider. The first one is, I was asking after you. And the second one is, I was asking about you. When you look at the two expressions very closely, you will discover that we have marked them out with green asterisk indicated the fact that both expressions are grammatically correct and usable in everyday English. Now, what are the grammar tips to explain that? For the first one, we have that. To ask about means asking for information about someone, while to ask after means a concern for well-being or whereabouts. So you can tell someone that you were asking about him or her and all that you were asking after him or her. So when you tell someone that we're asking after him or her, then you are indirectly telling the person that you were concerned about his or her whereabouts and all about his or her well-being. And when you tell someone that you were asking about him or her, then you are telling the person that you were asking for information about him or her. So that is how we can talk about these two expressions in everyday usage. Our next expression from word sets 103 is, please take care of your sister. 
with the words take care or the line in the expression to indicate grammatical ambiguity as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now, what do we mean by grammatical ambiguity? We say that an expression is ambiguous if it is capable of being interpreted in several ways because of the choice of words that have been used in it. In other words, the expression is not clear in meaning. Now, let's go over the grammatics to explain further. For the first one, we have that, just like I said, take care can mean several things. The, the expressions take care can mean to assassinate, to repair, or to say farewell, to beat someone farewell, and or to look after someone or something valuable. And that is what we have under the second grammar tip. Here we have, you can only look after a living thing or a valuable object. Now, what are we trying to say? When you tell someone, take care of your sister, we are not sure of what you are talking about because the expression is not clear in meaning. Are you telling the person to assassinate the sister? Or you are probably trying to beat her farewell? Or you are trying to tell the person to look after her sister? So, in order to become very clear in meaning with your expression, you would make the choice of look after instead of take care. So, instead of saying, please take care of your sister, you could say things like, please look after your sister. Please look after your sister. That is, look after instead of take care. And when we hear an expression like this, please look after your sister, we are going to be sure that you are asking the person to protect her sister or his sister. So that is what we mean by look after your sister. So this is the better choice to use in this context. And this is how we can discuss this expression in everyday usage. And with that, we move forward to our next set of expressions, which is check on you. Our next expression from word set 104 is I came to check on you to know the level of damage. With the words check on underlined in the expression to indicate a lexical error as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now we are saying that this expression contains a lexical error because a wrong word or group of words, in other words, a wrong phrase that is checked on has been used in it. When a wrong word or a wrong phrase is used in an expression, then we would say that the expression contains a lexical error. Now, instead of saying, I came to check on you to know the level of damage, you could say things like, I came to check up on you to know the level of damage. The conflict here is the purpose of the visit, like we have here on the line in green. Now, when you visit someone for a particular purpose, in other words, to obtain information, then you will not say that you are checking on the person. Rather, you would say that you are checking up on the person. Let's look at the grammar tips so that we can explain that better. For the first one, we have that to check on someone implies a concern about the well-being of the person. While to check up on someone means to gather information about the person. So, when you pay someone a visit to gather information about that person or about a particular incident that took place around the person, then you are going to say, that you are checking up on him or her. But when you pay someone a visit to inquire or to find out about the person's well-being, to know how the person is doing, generally speaking, then you are going to say you are checking on the person. So take a good note of the use of check on or when to use check on and when to use check up on. So this is how we can discuss these expressions in everyday usage.
With that, we move forward to our next word set, which includes check up on you. Our next expression from word set 105 is I came to check up on you to know how you are doing. With the words check up on or the line in red to indicate a lexical error as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now, this expression, this entire expression, is the direct opposite of what we explained on that word set 104, where we try to differentiate between the use of check on and check up on. Don't forget, we are going to use the same grammar tips to explain this expression or the error that we have spotted with this expression. And for the first one, we are saying things like to check on someone implies a concern about the person's well-being, while to check up on someone means to gather information about the person. So what is important here is the purpose of the visit. Like we have a green asterisk that is underlined in green in this same expression, indicating the purpose of the visit. It came to check up on you, the purpose to know how you are doing. So, when you go to see someone to know how the person is doing, that is about the person's well-being, then you are going to use check on and not check up on. And like we explained on that website 104, when you pay someone a visit to get specific information about the person or about an incident that took place around the person, then you are going to use check up on. So that's the difference that we explained on that website 104, the difference between check up on and check on. So instead of saying, I came to check up on you to know how you are doing, you would say, I came to check on you to know how you are doing. So this is how we can discuss this expression in everyday usage. With that, we move forward to our next expression, which is a lot of damages. Our next expression from word set 106 is he caused a lot of damages to my car. With the word damages on the line in the expression to indicate a lexical error as the error type to which this expression can be classified. Now we are saying that this expression contains a lexical error because a word has been wrongly used in it and that word is damages. In other words, damages is not the right word for this expression. And how do we explain that under the grammar tips? Under the grammar tips, number one, we have that damages means money claimed as compensation for loss. Now, there's no way you are going to say that someone costs such money to your car. Then number two, the word damage is a non-count noun when it is used to mean the destruction to a property or the injury caused to someone or loss. So when it is used to mean destruction, then it does not attract S. Therefore, instead of saying it caused a lot of damages to my car, you would say it caused a lot of damage to my car. This is how we can talk about this expression in everyday usage. With that, we move forward to our next set of expressions, which is pay for damages. Our next expression from word set 107 is he was asked to pay for damages on my car. With the words pay for damages underlined in the expression to indicate verbosity or a semantic error. Now, we are saying that this expression is verbose or redundant because too many words than necessary have been used in it. For example, the use of for in this expression is unnecessary. Other than grammar tips number two, we have that the use of for is redundant in the expression. Then, we are also going to say that this expression contains a semantic error. When do we say that an expression contains a semantic error? If the words that are used in the expression have been poorly brought together or poorly organized to construct the sentence. Now, the words that are used in this sentence are poorly arranged. 
Therefore, we are going to say that the expression contains a semantic error as well. Therefore, instead of saying he was asked to pay for damages on my car, you could say he was asked to pay damages for the damage to my car. On that note, we are indirectly trying to contrast what we discussed on that word set. One who sees when we're talking about the use of damage and damages. Don't forget that damage without it is a non-count noun, which means injury or loss or the destruction caused to a property. Whereas damages with S is also a noun, which means the payment or the compensation that is made for the injury caused to someone. So instead of saying he was asked to pay for damages of my car, you would say he was asked to pay damages. And if you want to beautify the expression, then you can add the remaining part of the expression by saying he was asked to pay damages for the damage to my car. So this is how we can talk about this expression in everyday usage. Without we move forward to our next expression, which is I like it anyways. Our next expression from word set 108 is I don't like green, but I'll try it anyways. This expression is a colloquial expression with the use of this word anyways in it. Now under the grammar tips we have that. Anyways is a purely American usage. The word anyways is simply unusable in British English. Therefore, in British usage, we would say things like, I don't like green, but I'll try it anyway. So instead of saying, I don't like green, but I'll try it anyways, you would say, I don't like green, but I'll try it anyway. So that is how we can discuss this expression in everyday English. Without we move forward to our next set of expressions, which is frank and sincere, to be frank and sincere. Our next expression from word set 109 is to be frank and sincere, I don't like green. With the words frank and sincere underlined in the expression to indicate verbosity or intertological error. The expression is verbose because too many words have used the need that necessary and because two or more words that are the same in meaning have been used in it. Now, how do we explain that under the grammar tips? Under the grammar tips, we have that to be frank is to be sincere. So it is unnecessary to use these two words together in the same expression. Therefore, instead of saying to be frank and sincere, you could say to be frank, I don't like green. Or you say to be sincere, I don't like green. So this is how we can talk about this expression in everyday English. With that, we move forward to our final word set in this episode, which is the way and manner. Our final word set in this episode is I like the way and manner you handle the situation. With the words way and manner underlined in the expression to indicate verbosity or a tautological error, meaning that the words are too many in this expression and all two or more words that mean the same thing have been used in it. Therefore, under the grammar tips, we would explain that a way talks about a manner. Therefore, both words cannot be used together in the same expression. Instead of saying, I like the way and manner you handle the situation, you could say, I like the way you handled the situation. Or you say, I like the manner you handled the situation. I like the way you handled the situation. Or I like the manner you handled the situation. This is how we can talk about these expressions in everyday English. With that, we come to the conclusion of the 12th episode in our 21 in 1 video series. Can we stay blessed? to meet again over episode 13.